churches, especially my hats off to the Catholics. I will say that repeatedly. These people are genius, absolute genius. But your words and thoughts matter. The word amen was taken a long time ago, further along than you people even realize. That is a word that will take your energy immediately, all of it, immediately, and hook it to Jehovah God. So be careful how you use the word amen. This is not even a joke. If you do accidentally, which I do all the time, I was raised a Christian, if you do accidentally use the word amen, immediately recall your energy to yourself. Oh. Immediately, just say it. That's it. You're God. Go, oops, no, bring it back. It's mine, not yours. So you can change it to Amy? You absolutely can. Absolutely. Amy is great. <laughs> Amy is awesome. But your words matter. Your contracts that you sign matter. Any interaction that you have with anyone on the planet ever, especially humans, humans are built to be vampires. You have been a vampire. Everyone around you is a vampire. That hole in the middle of your heart not being connected and wanting to be, there's an instant, I don't care if you glance at somebody and smile, instantly there's a thread of energy that reaches between the two of you. They are going to have one attached to you, you are going to have it attached to them, and what you're doing is you're pulling energy trying to fill that hole. Okay? It happens all the time. It happens with all kinds of religions, all kinds of, of uh, governmental things. Uh, they steal your energy a lot. And a lot of that, especially for us older, when we get older, we start getting tired. The reason why you're tired is because you're attached to all of these things that you've done your whole life and you didn't know it. The energy is being pulled from you. And since you aren't aware that you have endless power when you pull from source, because you don't, because you've been taught you're nothing, then you're depleted. You come with X amount, you believe, when you're a child, you've got all this energy, but you attach to all these people, these people attach to you, and it gets drained, especially women. Women are taught to give, give, give. Don't think of yourself. Give, give, give. So we get drawn out a lot sooner than men do. However, because we're also taught to fight, beware, we actually will give ourselves more energy frequently. So that's why we live longer than they do. Damn it. <laughs> so, so anyway, you have to be aware. So what I do personally, however you do it, is up to you. But at the end of the day, but at the end of every day, what I will do is I will visualize myself spinning. And every bit of these little cords that are caught to me, I say, a mantra, I say, send it back. Send it back. No harm, no foul. I was involved in this exchange, but I don't want it. And I send all the energy back to everybody else, and I take back my own. So for anybody that I inadvertently attach to, because I've been used to doing it for decades, is I bring my energy back. I don't want to give them any. You've got yours. I've got mine. I'll draw from my own. Since I've done that, I feel remarkably better. All illness is done by stress, and it's done by that depletion of energy. Ultimately, it's because of you. All of us start losing that energy because of that setup, and then how you play out your disease is really up to you. If you believe that, if you've been told that your family is prone to heart attacks, you'll have a heart attack. If they're prone to cancer, then you'll have cancer. If you start reading that if you've eaten this kind of food, you'll get cancer, you'll get cancer. Cancer is very prevalent because of all the stuff that's put in your head. But how you, your body fails and how you eventually lose that energy and how it plays out, that's totally up to you. And you can change it at any time. There's no reason for that business. Uh, the, the human body was actually created, as you probably know, and you definitely know, that every cell in your body is completely replaced every seven years. There is no reason for it to die other than your belief that it's going to. There's no reason for it to age at all. You can go to whatever age you want and stay that way. It's just the belief system is so ingrained in you that that would be very hard to do. All of this is based on your belief, and you believe in it. You believe that this wood is floor, floor is, is hard, and you can walk on it. That's not true. You know it's not true. You all know it's not true. It's made up of atoms, the same atoms that are in the air. You know that's not true. You know that an atom is almost all space. Very little of anything else, and that's only because you can't look any further. 
If you do that, it's all energy based. It's your belief system that, that this is all the way it looks. And we all agree with it. The funny thing for me is, you think you're all looking at the same house, the same wood floor, the same person, and you're not seeing any of this the same, any of you. And that's the point. We are a part of one. We come from the experience. We see through different eyes. We experience all of it differently. Because why would we do it redundantly? We're all one. The point is for us to do it all differently. So that we can add it to the experience of the whole. So we can go, whoa. When I did it, it was like this. It's like we were talking earlier. And Alta and Gordon have been together 50 years. But their experience on this planet, even though the majority of their life has been side by side, but their experience in this life is dramatically different. Not a little bit different, but dramatically different. And they've ex had completely different experiences. If you had Siamese twins, their experience would be dramatically different because it depends upon what you decide to take in and believe and what you don't. I mean, I know people that are that are skinny people that say, I can eat whatever I want, and I never gain a pound. Well, guess what? They can eat whatever they want and never gain a pound. I've said for years, mainly because my dad told me so, that we are a heavy family and I, will, I am too fat and I need to worry about that. Guess what? I've had to worry about it my whole life. It is whatever belief you believe to accept is what you will play out. The second you figure that out, you can start going back through those beliefs and going, nah, not buying it. I don't want this one. I don't want this one. Bullshit, bullshit. You start calling bullshit on it and see your life change. But you got to be really, really honest about what you want because as we were saying before, is when you really say, I don't want something, your life is going to change and it will fall apart. And everything that you see that you've created, when you say, I don't want this, well, it's likely to just disappear. One way or the other, it'll disappear. But that was your call. It wasn't the guy that's taken it from you or the disease that's taken from you. It was your call. You said, I don't want this. Well, guess what? If you don't want this, it goes away. Because you're fucking God. Oops, excuse me. Be careful God. what you pray for. It, exactly. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. Because you will get it. You are that powerful. Now, if you're wise, you'll let it go and go, okay, I didn't want the, this to be this way anymore, and now this is going away. I don't know why it's going away, but whatever it is I want is around the corner. And trust that, and it will be so. It will be so. I know women that are in relationships that they despise. They hate the men. They want the perfect guy, but they don't let the bad guy go. Now, you don't have to do that. None of them have to do that. But it's almost impossible to go to a timeline where your horrible guys become a good guy. They exist, but getting to do that and getting the past out of the way, much easier to dump a guy and wait for the good guy. Get yourself changed first, though, because guess what? Whoever you're with, you match them. You match them. So if he's an asshole, you match him. And you cannot be in any kind of relationship unless you are vibrationally within range of that situation. Not relationship, not jobs, not countries. You have to match them. So you, you want out? You got to change your vibration first. It doesn't change what it, what you create comes first. Then everything else around you, you just don't know that. So you got to vibrate something different first, and then everything changes around you because you're the creator. You decide. Any other questions? Statements? What is we all are one? What does that mean? Everything, and, and that's really hard, because everybody wants to know, well, what is all at one, and where did it start? Well, that's all linear time thinking, and that's all space thinking. When you collapse, uh, well... How do I explain that? Okay, it, it is not hard for you to understand that there are atoms in a molecule, molecules in a cell, cells in a body, right? That makes sense? And all of that is one? Well, think of it like that. Only it's way, way, way bigger than that. So all of us together, you know, you, you can be a cell and I can be a molecule or the tree can be a finger. All of that put together is all it is, is one. 
and we all are connected that way. It's just way, way, way bigger than your body. But it operates like that. Well, now there are doctors now who are saying that we ought to think of our bodies as a condominium, really, because we have all kinds of jillions of bacteria and parasites and everything yep. that are living on us and in us, that are symbiotic with us. So that's what we kind are. Kind of like Gaia, and you guys on Gaia? Yeah, yeah. We're like a big bird. But it's, it's way bigger than that. It goes down to infinity, out to infinity. There are those those bacteria are condominiums for other things. Like those other things are condominiums for other things, and it goes down, 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 down to, in, to infinity. As above, so below is true. So true. So, so, so true. This is just a very, very tiny, tiny part of this big game that started with that dualistic split. It's just a tricky part of the game. About everything else is, is not is in amnesia. It's the human beings that are in amnesia. And any animal that's close to a human, they're more in amnesia. But everything else is kind of in the now. It's much more aware than you are. That's the reason why people feel so much better when you go out in nature is because you connect with the knowingness and in the now. That's why you feel better out there. It's the reason why you feel most people feel better away from people. You want to get out into nature. If you sit down and are calm in nature, it's why the monks go up away from people. It's why shamans go up away from people. It's because that stuff out there knows what's going on. It's not afraid of death. It's not afraid of being eaten. It's just the way it is. Being death is like walking from here outside. It's no big deal. But you guys, if you have to be afraid of death because if you remember what I remember, yeah, it's really hard to not die. Whenever knowing you, when you know what I know, it's really hard not to die. I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of her dying. It'd be a relief if all everybody died. I go, okay, everybody's good now. Everybody's good. So in order to play the game, there has to be a built-in fear of death. There must be. You can't remember where we are and just stay here because you wouldn't have the experience. So that's why they said that. Well, knowing what you know, everything that you experience, why are you still here? Good question. That's a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually tried to leave many ways. Four or five times right after I came back, I tried, tried, I tried to die before I died too because I was in a really bad situation. So I figured if I died, it would be better for Stephanie. So I tried to kill myself. I tried to electrocute myself. Wiped out a whole block in of electricity in Houston on that one. Tried to down aspirin, as you well know, the favorite death way of, for nurses, because you cannot stop it. I went through about three bottles like this, nothing, didn't die. Tried to cut my wrist, finally. I the ulcer a lot, though. Yeah, that <laughs> pretty much went death, but I wasn't supposed to die in any of those ways. I was supposed to die the way I died. I had this really sharp knife, I swear, that was the funniest one. That was the one I gave up. Because I finally said, okay, Stephanie, I'm going to go out here, and I'm going to cut my wrist. I'm going to park the truck here. You wait X amount of time, because I didn't want her to come find me like that. And I said, you call the cops. You tell them I walked off into that forest, and there's my truck. I didn't want to go die in the truck either. They'd take the truck, and she needed the truck. So, you know. <laughs> so we I took this really, 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 didn't you? really oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we cried and talked and hugged each other and said goodbye, and she understood, and and uh, walked out of the forest with the, oh, I had a knife that was, you could drop silk on it, it was separated, it was that sharp. So I walked out there, centered myself, this is before I died, man, I was just desperate and didn't know what else to do. And I took that knife and tried to cut my veins right and nothing, not even a red mark. I pushed as hard as I could, nothing. And I just started crying, I started crying, because this, you know, this is like putting a gun to your head three times. And I started crying. I said, I don't understand. I, I'm confused. So I went back and asked Stephanie three times after three weeks of being told I was dead. Now three times I tried to kill myself. Nothing. And I said, and watch this. That was funny because after that you did try to do it in front of me. Yeah, I said, I said, watch this. And I went like that with this knife. And she went, what? She took the knife and put her thumb against it barely. Drew back blood. Split her thumb open. And I went... I don't know, but I was so sick and desperate at that time. I didn't think esoterically. I just went, I get up, and I just laid down. And I think it was the next week that I died. 
like, like three half days. a week actually. Yeah, it was like three days I was dead. But I had to be dead the way it was planned to be dead. <laughs> dead other ways. So needless to say after that, that was before I died. Let alone now. I, and I think I've tried a couple of little things. But it's... Uh, well, you, you talked to your higher yeah. self and basically was told, no. Nope. Yeah, I think I said, I said, I'm done. Can I just do this? And I make jokes about it all the time because I think it's good for people to hear. Because I make jokes about... I was in New York City and I was forever ste stepping out in front of a bus. Because that big great headline, great death. My budgie jumped off of a really high thing. I went, this would be a great death. Something could fail. I could die. So people would like relax about the whole death thing. But yeah, I don't. I'm, I, it isn't meant to be. And I've got a bigger part of me running. Well, which part of would you say your higher self is not going to allow you to leave yet because you had a, a mission to fill? Yes. Basically, the painting's yet? not done. Yeah, it's not done. I'm not done. You wouldn't be done. teaching all of us and I don't know else. what it is. I've given up trying to figure it out. Now it's become beyond talking to people. It's energy, work with Sandy, with groups that I do stuff with, with New Year's last year, New Year's this year. I mean, it's getting bigger and bigger. And I'm just, if, if I would have known, because I, I could know anything about any of you guys. That's easy. I could know anything about the planet. That's easy. I'm not allowed to know about me. And the reason why, because over the last like year, I know why, is because I would have gone, F you, I'm not doing it. I would have stayed home. So I end up being at the right place at the right time, interacting in the right place with the right people, and I get stuff done. And it happens right then. I usually don't get, what, I get 10 minutes this year? I got 10 minutes notice this year. I got two weeks notice last year. But last year I needed more time to do what I was going to do because I really thought it was a big it was a big deal. That one did almost kill me. I mean, it did almost kill me. I'm a nurse, I know. It did. But no.